Hola, everyone. This is Miguel Perez Colino. I'm the product manager for Migration Toolkit for Applications. Give me a couple of minutes and I will let you know how you can leverage your Java application portfolio and modernize it. First things first, why? I mean, you probably have a lot of Java applications running uh, productive workloads and you want to modernize them. You want to leverage all the power that brings uh, microservices, containers, Kubernetes, and make them more modern. So that is the journey. You have to go step by step. You have to uh, move away from proprietary components to open source components to go into the cloud to be cloud native. So which are those components? For example, you could migrate from a proprietary JDK to open JDK, which is easy to use, easy to consume within containers. You could move from competitive middleware like uh, proprietary middleware to Red Hat middleware, which is open source. You could move from uh, to containerized Tomcat. You could move your Spring Boot applications into containers with OpenShift. You could, uh, if you're using community uh, provided app servers and you want to move to supported ones, you could do that. And also if you're using Apache Camel 2, you could move to Camel 3. This is all in, with the intention to move into containers, to containerize your applications, to adopt those containers, then later on break down the monolith and then augment everything with agile integration and become more agile. So in this journey, what tools do we offer? So we have different tools for every stage. So in the preliminary stage, when you want to discover the workloads that you have and see if it makes sense from a business perspective, you have migration analytics. Then if you want to assess the organizational readiness, you have ready to accelerate to know in which part of your organization you need to invest more effort into transforming yourselves. And then Pathfinder could help you with the application portfolio, whenever you have a large application portfolio to select where to start first, which applications makes more sense to, to containerize, to transform, to modernize. And then the migration toolkit for applications can introspect into the code, analyze it, and then help you modernize it. As I say, no pixie dust included. So you are all the, all the time in control of what is in the code and what is, it gets changed. So you end up in a in a very good control situation in a modernized application environment. So what does the migration toolkit for application do? Well, it has a set of rules that could help you analyze the, the applications. And these rules cover, for, for example, as I said, whenever you're using an artifact that is a proprietary artifact from a proprietary Java EE runtime, that uh, uh, is, for example, sending the logs in a, in a very peculiar way and it's not compatible with using it in containers, well, it will discover that for you. Also, if you're moving from, from Windows to Linux and you have uh, Windows paths included in your application, it will discover that to you. Also, if you want to upgrade your Java EE application, it could help you with upgrades and make them easier. If you want to move to JBoss EAP or Tomcat, which we offer containerized in OpenShift. It could help you do that too. And we have included in the latest version uh, rules to help you move from Spring Boot to Quarkus in case you're interested in increasing the speed of your application or reducing the memory footprint. And then we have rules for container readiness based on the 12-factor apps. So you could containerize your applications uh, with confidence. And also, in case you're using your own frameworks and you have your own coding styles, you could create your own rules to point uh, to find the issue that you want to correct and point to a resource, let's say internal wiki, that has the recipe on how to change that. So how can you consume all of this? Well, we provide four distributions of the migration toolkit for applications. There's a command line interface that is like uh, the most flexible way to consume it. You could embed it into pipelines and without having to touch anything in your application, you could run it in batches and you could use it like uh, uh, in, in your own laptop or, or, in your, or in any kind of server, in any kind of automation. Then you have the web console, which is a centralized a point in which you could put all the applications, analyze them there and have a set of reports all together with a nice UI that you could uh, use to review all, all the changes that are being done. Then you have IDE plugins that are embed uh, uh, MTA, Migration Token for Applications, in your IDE. So you could do the analysis within the IDE, then make the changes, and then rerun the analysis and see if the rules are not triggered anymore, if the thing uh, that you needed to fix has been fixed. And finally, you have a migrant plugin, just in case you want to embed Migration Token for Applications. In your, in your pipelines, in your build pipelines, but modifying the POM uh, XML file 
for that. Just in case you want more information, of course, you could follow us in Twitter, MTA by Red Hat, and get detailed information daily. So how does Migration Toolkit for Application look like? Well, this is the web console. You can create a project, select a number of applications, analyze them, and then see the analysis results. It's super easy to deploy. You could deploy it on OpenShift. You could deploy it on your own laptop. You could deploy it on a VM with, uh, with Linux or Windows, as long as you have uh, a JDK available. What do you get in those applications? Well, you get a full analysis of the applications, you get a full list of issues, including the issues that are common to different applications, and uh, you get um, uh, story points to, to be able to assess how difficult is this application to transform. You can determine the application dependencies, the artifacts that are shared by different applications, so you only have to change them once. They will be discovered with dependencies graph and, of course, dependencies list that you could track and, and seek. And also, in the web console and in the IDE, uh, you could get to the point in which you could find where the, the rule has been triggered and why and have links to resources to help you modify uh, your application in order to make it, to transform it, to make it uh, compliant with your target, uh, your path, you know. And finally, as I said before, the IDE plugins. We have them for Eclipse, for Code Ready Studio, for Visual Studio Cloud, and for Eclipse Chair, Code Ready Workspaces too. So you could use these plugins in your environment of choice and be able to analyze the code directly from within your IDE.